This video is intended as a refresher for individuals who have received training from a qualified NLD trainer. If you have not received in-person training, do not attempt to operate this equipment. Simple housekeeping is necessary when preparing your high-pressure water jetting unit for operation. Whether it's your unit's first time operating or its hundred, running through this simple checklist can be critical to maintaining a healthy running, high-performing NLB unit. Let's start with our basics. NLB units typically come mounted on a trailer or on a skid. However, no matter how they're mounted, you'll need to make sure that the unit is level in both horizontal and vertical planes. Whether it's skid or trailer mounted, it will include the same general components. These components include the engine, engine control panel, high pressure pump consisting of the power end and the fluid end, diesel exhaust fluid tank or DEF tank, fuel tank, accessory manifold including the rupture disc, bypass valve and high pressure gauge, water filters, and both high pressure discharge hoses and low pressure inlet hoses. Most pumps utilize some means of coupling and decoupling the pump from the engine. These include a standard PTO, a transmission, or NLB's new e-clutch. All NLB diesel powered units come standard with an engine control panel. To activate the panel, turn the key to the run position. Once activated, you can monitor def tank levels, hours of unit operation, battery life, engine temperature, oil pressure, and any error codes that may arise. Before starting the unit, you'll need to check all of the fluid levels. This includes things like oil, engine coolant, fuel, def fluid, and pump oil. Reference your NLB operating manager or the unit manual for a complete startup checklist. Now that the fluid levels have been checked, we're ready to start our basic inspection. For safety, walk around the unit to make sure everything is secure. Belt guards should be tightly fastened and high pressure hoses should be secured to prevent injuries. Inspect both your regular and high pressure hoses, making sure they are intact and not worn or damaged. All inlet filtration elements should be in place and in good condition. Different units will have various inlet filtration options, but no matter the style, the procedure for checking them is the same. For this unit, these elements include a bag filter and the filter screen where it sits. To check them, unscrew the fasteners and take the lid off. Reach inside and pull out the filter element. Make sure they're clean. Replace the filter element if necessary. Some units have a water tank. All traces of debris need to be removed from it. Open the tank and inspect the inside to make sure there are no contaminants. Ensure the gasket is in good condition to prevent debris entering during operation. The water tank screen adds a layer of protection to your pump. Make sure it is in place for optimal operation. Prior to connecting the low pressure supply line to the unit, flush out the hose. There are many different types of water connectors, but no matter the style on your unit, make sure the connector is tight and leak free while you're here. Other units have a direct feed system where the water travels through the filter and directly flows into the pump. It's still critical the water is not contaminated. The accessory manifold is your main source to oversee pressure. It houses the rupture disc, bypass valve, and high pressure gauge. The rupture disc is the safety valve for the entire system, including the pump, tools, and hoses. If the maximum allowable pressure of the system is exceeded, the disc will blow to protect the equipment from permanent damage. Make sure the rupture disc housing is intact and that there is a wire with a lead seal on it that indicates the proper disc is inside. This tamper-proof seal should indicate the pressure the pump is configured to operate at. If it is not present, do not attempt to operate the pump. Visually inspect the rupture disc holder assembly to confirm it has no visible damage. The bypass valve is used to set the water pressure. As you turn the valve handle in a clockwise motion, more water will be diverted to the work site. Make sure the handle has been turned counterclockwise to its maximum relief position where the handle is loose by hand so that when you start the pump, you have zero pressure in the system. Once you start the pump, the pressure gauge will help you verify that the pressure is set correctly. Before starting the pump, check to make sure the gauge is at zero. If the gauge needle is outside of the zero band of the gauge, the gauge is defective and needs to be replaced immediately. Next, remove the plunger well cover. Confirm that the water lubrication lines are securely connected to the packing cartridges. Clean any water and debris that may be in the plunger well and check that the drain is clear. We're now ready to start the unit. Connect your inlet water hose and turn on the supply water. 
if the unit has a water tank, allow it to fill. Turn the key on. Let the panel power up and then turn the key to start the unit. Watch the display on the panel. If there are any faults that are shown, turn off the unit and refer to the operator manual for directions on how to clear or address the fault. With the engine now running and no high pressure hose or tooling attached to the unit, roll the pump over without engaging the PTO until you get a large, solid stream of water from the accessory manifold. While this is happening, inspect the plunger well of the pump to ensure that water is traveling through the lubrication lines and onto the plungers. Let the pump rotate until a solid stream of water comes out of the discharge valve fitting. You can now disengage the pump from the engine, shut the unit off, and prepare to make your high pressure connections. After connecting your high pressure hose, repeat the last step until you get a steady stream of water out of the hose. You are now ready to make the final connection to the tool that you will be using. Refer to the manual that came with that tool and follow all of the manufacturer's recommendations. If you have any additional questions, please contact an NLB representative.